Systematic processing in general is an exercise in selectively directing attention. This is one of the reasons it's so effective for increasing awareness. The exercises given in the basic course, uh, you know, particularly related to presence in session or the opening procedures for a formal, for a formal session, uh, they're the most fundamental processes by themselves because they orient a seeker in present time and space, which makes any of the other processing even possible. So, our, our systematic processing methods, they're effective when we can collect or concentrate a seeker's available awareness or the actualized awareness and then increase it. So this is essentially, this is essentially the opposite of hypnotism. Uh, in, in processing, a seeker frees up more of their available attention units by taking them off of whatever they have been fixed on uh, unknowingly. And, and generally throughout one's existence, you know, or for, or for quite one, for quite some time, for quite a long time on the spiritual timeline. And so we are, you know, in the first, for the first time that I'm aware of along the spiritual timeline, we're actually in a position to correct this. There's been really no efforts to correct uh, the situation as, as far as I can tell, given the progression and, and the way things have been. So, uh, so this is a first. And uh, so we are trying to basically free up the the condensation. It's difficult to relay on a on a physical, you know, on a two-dimensional uh, form here. But the dissension or the descent, the 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 lower the lowering of the awareness and beingness of the individual is the result of more of its awareness having been parked back here or being still fixed or tied to points back here which has left it with a much less much less of its own free units of attention and awareness to to make use of to too much of it has gotten tied up along the way subsequent to those units becoming more tied up to various agreements and considerations we have experienced lower and lower uh, universes, to, to use the word, uh, we've used experienced lower versions of beta existence, uh, you know, in, in relation to those, to, to less awareness. It requires freeing that up in order to actually have a true experience of anything higher or transcendental out of uh, this physical existence. And so, as you know, in, in view of that fact, it, it's very interesting to see uh, how much religion has played a role in human society, which, you know, for our purposes is infinity. You know, if we're going to talk about any kind of divinity or God or anything of that nature, source, you know, we're talking about infinity. And individuals that can barely see, you know, two feet in front of their face, spiritually speak, speaking, because they, they no longer will even, you know, they're no longer even confronting this energy anymore. They're using uh, various catalysts or, or, or vias, very various uh, relays to do it for them. They have some kind of uh, belief that they that they know something about infinity. It is to me somewhat ridiculous. But more to the point, um, we are basically the fragmentation, I've put a few vocabulary words here that uh, we kind of covered in the basic course, but which play a role when we start to, you know, enter into the, the realm of, you know, moving out of theory and moving into the practice of, of processing. So what we're talking about, uh, in most cases, is fragmentation. We're talking about fragmentation uh, of, of the wholeness. And this is, this is actually a term that we started using, I, you know, I personally started using to describe, uh, you know, what I eventually wanted to achieve with systemology back in the 1990s. And so, you know, fragmentation, it, it really, it, it denotes the, the fracture of wholeness, or in, in many ways is the splitting or the halving of, you know, at each, at each point what is available uh, to the individual along the way. Uh, or what is still freed up as, as potential for reality. What is the potential 
uh, everythingness compared to what is what has already been agreed to. Because uh, potential is no longer potential once it becomes a reality agreement. Then, then we have uh, agreed to that reality. So, uh, in most cases, fragmentation is going to concern what we don't want to confront directly. And you know, so we kind of you know, uh, shut down, so to speak. We sh you know shut down on those areas, and we withdraw from them. But um, you know, unfortunately, we don't take when we do this, and this is why that's so dangerous uh, or detrimental spiritually. You know, it's not really necessarily dangerous, but it it is spiritually detrimental uh, to uh, withdraw from something without taking all of our attention units off of it. And so, you know, we, we, we decide we don't want to deal with it anymore and, you know, we don't want uh, to have anything to do with it, to think about it, to, to handle it in any way, but we know it might bite us. So we, uh, you know, when we're not looking. So we kind of just leave a certain part of ourselves, uh, a part of our uh, potential awareness, you know, parked there to kind of keep an eye on it. And, you know, we talked about the various levels of knowingness in the basic course at the very beginning you know the, the the actual knowing the gray areas and then that which is you know buried so far beneath that you got to remove some of that to get to and so a lot of this withdrawal at first it's something an individual knowingly does uh, they knowingly are like okay I, you know they make a decision eh, I don't like how that makes me feel or eh, I don't like the react you know how I internally react to that so I'm not going to deal with it that's you know that's number one and so what happens beyond that is you know the area that that entire area that's being withdrawn from it, it sinks into the kind of shadowy gray area for a while until um, you know in our awareness until it becomes completely handled you know unknowingly and on automatic and that's where the danger uh, you know comes in that's what we call fragmentation fragmentation very seldom has to do with what an individual has knowingly done you know with all of their faculties and awareness fragmentation is generally concerns uh stuff that we no longer have full conscious control over or awareness of at, at, at this point uh, we've also uh imprint we've uh we've retained the word imprint and that's best probably understood in the way um uh, um you know almost almost literally you've probably noticed you know I'm sure that uh, you're, you're likely to give something a little more of your attention uh, when it's first encountered when you when you first you know interact with something it, it's it's new there's that novelty you give it a lot more of your attention and you know certainly you know we've in common language we've used that expression you know first impressions and so it's it's these instances where we're most susceptible to essentially you know take data that that is being sensed and and basically duplicate it as our as our reality it becomes our our agreement to that to to, to reality so we have an, you know a particular imprint about something during that encounter and that becomes basically the the basis or the staple on which anything else that that we experience regarding it is is based on and these imprints are another form of significant uh, fragmentation uh, because uh, again it begins to there's there's again nothing wrong with treating things analytically of course it's better to know things instead of think about them but the the issue with imprinting when it comes to fragmentation is the alpha spirit stops uh, essentially looking um, stops creating and it starts using the imprinting you know the imprinted mental image pictures and and uh, reactive reactive stimu uh, reactive imagery or, or sensations whenever something is encountered it uses that as the total basis of reality and uh, as, as a result of that that's another way in which the total awareness, the total actual or total available potential awareness that an individual has available to them gets reduced. Because again, they're not, they're, more is happening on automatic. As more is set to happen on automatic, I mean, an individual begins with, you know, unlimited potential. But as more as they choose to put that unlimited potential on automatic and keep all of these various mechanisms and relays and circuitry, uh, created 
well that's it it's still it's still containing a lot of their energy to keep that made up even if they don't you know knowingly you know as as aware that they're doing it and so this is a very you know existence life reality and everything very unforgiving you know it's not you you knew once and you set something up once or you agreed to something once or you took a mental image picture of something once or you had a consideration once and that thereafter affected you know if it was significant enough significant enough to have you know we're, we're not talking about whether or not you wanted pizza or tacos for dinner uh, we're, we're talking about things on whether or not gravity is a necessary part of you know beta existence and at some juncture these agreements these considerations are made or you know even if in enforceably so and thereafter we have so strongly you know fixed to those considerations and then, you know in most cases what we're going to be treating when it comes to you know general human problems and communication and so forth we're we're gonna you know we're not gonna tackle you know you know the agreements you made that that totally fix you in this universe altogether uh, from day one uh, we're treating it as a gra gradient scale but uh, remember that with this spiritual timeline and the progressive development and descent that we've had there's no arbitraries here so the total culmination of what is keeping an individual down here uh, is the total sum of their reality agreements for this universe and when those can be you know traced back handled systematically processed knowingly in a session whether by oneself or you know assisted with a co-pilot well only then can they be undone only then can an individual actually spot the moment when these were actually made if an individual doesn't know they made them they can't put any conviction or awareness or, or attention on the idea of it it's not real enough to them to even go oh well let me just think myself uh, now out of here and 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 this was all not no that there were so many layers of agreements that have been made in order to uh, reach the point that we have you know descended that they need to be systematically undone and hence our systemology is to my to my knowledge is the only the only pathway out and and back up to uh, reach ascension as alpha spirits For processing to be effective, we begin with those techniques that will help bring together those attention units that are actually accessible to the seeker and then, um, you know, increase those. And the ones that are most useful, again, you want to uh, refer back to your basic course, the Fundamentals of Systemology basic course, the lesson six in that, or in booklet six, that uh, pertains to the uh, stan standard uh, uh, present or the standard operating procedures or opening procedures for the formal session because that's that's basically with if you, you know if you're if you're having difficulties with the formal session and just the basic the basic exercises that we've outlined there uh, it doesn't serve to you know keep going forward in this so um, uh, the general the the most useful uh, general methods for selectively directing attention they're actually given there and uh, you'll see them uh, listed under orientation and present space time there's also uh, uh, various um, other uh, you can use this for not just uh, you know for formal sessions you can also use them for uh, mental and emotional strain times of mental and emotional strain to kind of reorient uh, yourself and such so for example the alternating command lines in the sample script for a formal session is, as given in the basic course they are look around and spot something in the room and what do you notice about that now this is of course taken from a traditional piloting transcript which involves two individuals a pilot and a seeker and that's dependent on you know their relay of communication so there's there's many variations of this that are effective uh, what that and when we refer to those lines those are actually two lines look around spot something in the room and what do you notice about that those are two lines we want to make sure the person you know the seeker looks around spot something in the room before you ask them what you know you notice about that uh, those are referred to as command lines so that is and we call them processing command lines and just to save time we generally refers to them as as PCL but 
you know, for solo processing, you know, rather than using the communicative report, uh, approach, you might, for example, look around and notice things. Locate precise points on the object moving quickly from one point to another. So it's just rather than a repetitive line or where there's going to be back and forth communication, you know, you want to look around, notice things, look at specific points on the object, you know, and, you know, spot various points. And we want to actually notice things again. The idea is to actually bring awareness to actually being looking and noticing, not just, uh, you know, not just glancing about the room. Yeah, mm -hmm, yep, there's room there. Uh, that's not that's not systematic processing. And you'll get a feel for this, you know, as as uh, you know, you practice it. So, you know, in basic terms, what we're doing it would be knowingly duplicating, you know, the original basic systematic process of imprinting. So the way in which an individual imprints, you know, taking great notice of something, you know, again, like we were talking about with first impressions, taking great notice of something, you know, points on it, uh, kind of taking it in as a collective image, as collective impression, you know, and getting all of the data from basically that, and then duplicating that as our knowingness usually, and you know, as a standard human does, you know, duplicating that as their knowingness of, yep, that's a tree, that's a, this and that, you know and so forth. So, you know, in this case, we're taking knowing control, selectively directing attention to duplicate that knowingly. And so, and this is something, you know, this is like what would happen, like if you were to encounter a new person or enter a new place, and this is before, see, you, you know, you tend to leave the ability to perceive and create on automatic, because in the beginning, you're actually, you know, you're you're taking in all this information and kind of creating an impression or an imprint mental image picture about it you know thereafter a lot of that goes on automatic so and that's why people you know you'll notice like uh you know someone might make mistakes or or not be as aware of something uh on a, a journey that they take you know routinely or a route that they may take they you know just kind of go through the motions of doing it without actually noticing things uh, stuff like that. So, you know, certain stuff, a, the, a lot of the human condition can be set to go on automatic, uh, very robotically. And that's, we are actually, you know, in spite of, you know, some that might think that we actually do this, you know, as an effort to robotize people on some, some cult level, these, this methodology is actually, uh, you know, if, if anything, its use is to, is to undo that very, that very type of thing. So, um, now, um, it, it should also be noticed, you know, when uh, we take these permanent snapshots about our reality, uh, that the, the vibrancy often fades. This is why, you know, you've, you've heard people and probably maybe even yourself experience this idea about like the vividness of life in the universe and somewhat fading or, or appearing dull. Uh, you know, these pictures, a lot of the, the impressions and such that we've kind of left to go on automatic as the basis of our reality, you know, the color and such gets pretty washed out over time. They're not even really fed any real new energy uh, to speak of. So, you know, that, that would be one of the reasons why. Um, now, it's important when doing this process that, you know, you are actually, again, spotting precise points with your full attention and not just, you know, casually glancing around. I, I want to stress that these are, you know, systematic processes in spite of how plain the language used actually is or, you know, how simple or trivial the action that is requested or required to conduct the process is. So, um, One's going to notice too, uh, you know, at least with this first example that we're using, that, uh, you know, if you're using this process during periods of emotional turbulence or mental strain, you may you suddenly start to feel more alert or clear in your perceptions. You know, even if already awake and alert, there should be a sense of, you know, there should be a feeling of improvement or perhaps the room might seem a little brighter than before and such. In either case, you know, if, if these cases what you would want to do is actually acknowledge, uh, you know, even to yourself, if you're flying solo, that's still quite important. The, commu <laughs> the communication steps that take place between a seeker and, and a co-pilot uh, in traditional piloting, that communication still needs to be maintained by an individual with themselves uh, during solo sessions. Now, that doesn't mean imagining another individual as giving them information, but 
when you reach what we say here as like an endpoint, when you reach an endpoint, um, for example, doing a process until you feel better, doing a process until the room seems brighter, those are endpoints that should be acknowledged as endpoints, and then you want to end off of the process. So those are those are important to note. And um, here in a bit, we'll get into you know the difference between, for example, overrun and underrun. Uh, in terms of uh, running a process either too long or too short, how they affect the individual. So, um, but for now, uh, we'll, we'll take that up after a short break. The Joshua Free Anchor, JFI Publication, in conjunction with Mardukai Academy and the Systemology Society, present the single greatest breakthrough of the 21st century for all humanity the perfection of a new standard systemology, a complete map for the way out from the bottom to the top, and your key to being an ascended master in this lifetime. Everything you need is contained in three progressive self-guiding courses, the Fundamentals of Systemology Basic Course, the Pathway to Ascension Professional Course, and the Keys to the Kingdom Advanced Training Course and each should be studied and applied in their intended sequence and order as displayed in this video. All three courses combined are available as five standard hardcover volumes, but also as 33 installments, since each single course lesson is also available individually as a pocket-sized manual. The Fundamentals of Systemology basic course includes Being More Than Human, Realities in Agreement, Windows to Experience, Ancient Systemology, A History of Systemology, and Systemology Processing. The Pathway to Ascension Professional course, including processing levels 0 through 6, includes in Volume 1, Increasing Awareness, Thought and Emotion, Clear Communication, Handling Humanity, Free Your Spirit, Escaping Spirit Traps, Eliminating Barriers, and Conquest of Illusion. The Pathway to Ascension, Volume 2, includes Confronting the Past, Lifting the Veils, Spiritual Implants, Games and Universes, Spiritual Energy, Spiritual Machinery, The Arcs of Infinity, and Alpha Thought. The Keys to the Kingdom AT Advanced Training Course for Processing Level 7 in Volume 1 includes The Secret of Universes, Games, Goals, and Purposes, The Jewel of Knowledge, Implanted Universes, and the Supplementals, Systemology Biofeedback, and Systemology Procedures. The Keys to the Kingdom AT Advanced Training Course Processing Level 8 in Volume 2 includes Entities and Fragments, Spiritual Perception, Mastering Ascension, Advancing Systemology, and the AT Supplement, Systemology Piloting. All titles are available from your favorite bookseller. Explore new standard systemology today, and may you never be the same.